You know what the solution to the lonely male crisis is not? Uh, to go around hugging them. That's not going to work. Um, they just, peop, men keep just coming up with all these solutions for this crisis. I'm not denying that there's a crisis. I am denying the fact, uh, I'm making fun of the fact that we are supposed to call this a crisis um, and that women are supposed to solve it, first of all. But also, um, you don't think it's lonely for women <laughs> who um, are in marriages and relationships with men who are, uh, don't see them as human beings and literally just see them as an extension of themselves um, and they just project everything onto them and they treat them like a pet. You didn't see my story about that man who literally projected on a, onto a chicken the way some of these men project onto us. Um, so that's lonely. Uh, women are having a loneliness crisis too. It's just not the same because we actually have been doing the work of, of um, making friends and building community so that we have something to fall back on other than this r r idea of romantic love. But what I, I just, it's, it's not that men should not be talking about this. It's just that I really wish we would stop listening to men who don't understand how patriarchy is involved in all this. And they, they get so close. They get so close. And then they always fail because they don't understand patriarchy. So I want to show you what I saw on um, Twitter today. Because here's the thing, I used to listen to men too. And again, it's not that I don't listen to men, but I'm very, um, but I'm always gonna ask, are they, are they putting this through the lens of patriarchy when they're talking about um, clearly a, a thing that is a result of patriarchy among other things, capitalism, white supremacy culture, all of the, 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 the systems that are all, in, you know, they're all tied together, right? Uh, homophobia, that's another problem, especially in the United States. Men are so lonely because their misogyny is tied to their anti, uh, their, their uh, transphobia, the homophobia and all that stuff. They would have a lot more friends if they weren't so afraid of being called gay. So that's all homophobia and misogyny tied together. I'm trying to get y'all my sleeping dog in the frame. Um, but you know what? He may get up uh, at any point because he, he knows his, he has strong boundaries. But uh, I'm not really interested in listening to men unless I know that they've been doing the hard work of really understanding systems of oppression, <laughs> have been working on their own trauma, and understand the entitlement that comes with patriarchy. Because a lot of men don't understand that key piece of entitlement. And also the, the other thing of them being so dangerous, so, so dangerous to women in general, whether it's, you know, in romantic relationships, our dads, our uncles, our grandpas, our brothers, even our sons, because now there's like literally, you know, now that women are like, don't want to marry these men, the men are moving home to live with mom, and then her when they get annoyed. So we know that the most dangerous people in our lives are the men in our homes. We know that. Now, a lot of women don't realize that because we've been taught to be afraid of the boogeyman. Um, the boogeyman is in your bed. <laughs> Sorry, uh, not always. Not all men, hashtag. But um, hugging men is not the solution to the lonely male crisis. And maybe, just maybe, questioning purity culture might be one reason why men are so touched starved. So let's look at where this started today. Actually, before I get into it, just for anyone new here, I wrote this viral article for Harper's Bazaar, Men Have No Friends and Women Bear the Burden. Um, because I was really interested in this topic, not only because I actually, you know, was kind of like a toxically masculine <laughs> feminist, I've written articles, for, I wrote an article for Outside Magazine about that, but I've worked with mostly men and I worked with teenage boys on 23 day, 23 day backpacking um, trips and I've just related to men a lot um, and I wanted to understand why they're so lonely, but what I really needed to understand first is how is this tied to patriarchy? And why, why do I care so much about this? Because I seem to care more about this than its impact on women. Uh, Mose has left. He is not interested in this subject. Good for you. You know. <laughs> Boundaries. Oh, wait. No, he's interested. But you can't talk about anything, any of men's issues without also talking about its impact on women. Because women are always going to pay the price of men's problems. 
when they have addictions, we're the ones who are going to clean up after them. We're going to be like, I'm telling you, women are held accountable for men's problems, for men's behavior. So I really want to understand what was behind that. And I learned a lot from it. So I highly suggest you read this if you really want to understand. I and mean, even though this was written like five or six years, six years ago or something like, I have way more to add to this conversation now, but um, I'm very proud of this reporting. This is men's problem to solve. It's not our problem. That was the point of this. You can't fix men. Men have to fix themselves. Um, but we are dying from the impact of them not fixing themselves. So you make decisions based on what you can do to protect yourself from men refusing to deal with this. There are solutions. They just won't do anything about them. Um, in fact, after this went viral, I, I had men, and still every once in a while I have men, email me. Don't know how they get my email. Email me. Well, what do I do? I loved your article. It changed my life. What should I do next? Go read the article again and get, read or listen, listen to the podcast or read any of the things that I literally told you to read. I've already done the work for you. Stand up. So this isn't my level of expertise per se, but I do know a lot about this subject from lived experiences, from reporting, researching, and also being surrounded by men most of my life and all my jobs. Now being married to a man who talks about this and started two men's groups. So I kind of know my stuff. So what I'm not interested in is listening to men pontificate about this male loneliness crisis when it's really a male entitlement crisis, a male selfishness crisis, male men, men being attached to patriarchy instead of being brave enough to stand up against it. I'm going to show you how. So this woman tweeted this yesterday and it kind of blew up. I feel bad for her because she did it right before bed and didn't realize that she kind of poked a hornet's nest here. I heard something on a podcast that really shifted my reality. Again, so stop listening to male podcasters, <laughs> especially if male podcasters, unless they have a woman on their podcast or someone from a marginalized group on their park. Don't, don't listen to Scott Galloway, for instance. Jordan Peterson. Uh, that man hates hates women, and he's also anti-trans and anti. Like he's the worst. But um, just because he's a white bald man doesn't mean he knows what he's talking about. I swear to God, there's something about white bald men. People just assume they know a lot. It's weird. This isn't Daddy Warbucks, okay? And by the way, Annie, what kind of movie is that? Is, it, did, is that how they conditioned us to think that um, billionaires are great? Because Daddy Warbucks is a jerk. Anyway, I gotta watch that movie again. Um, some, <laughs> some men go months without being hugged. Hmm, by who? Who's not hugging them? When you say not being hugged by but for months, you mean because they're not in a relationship? First of all, if these are cishet men, they're not getting hugged because um, cishet men won't hug each other. Or, you know, I don't want to say cishet men. There's a lot of men on the DL who are causing a lot of harm. But men who date women, um, if they go months without being hugged, what you're really saying is they're not, they, they won't hug anybody but women. They can change that, you know? Did you know they can change that? They don't have to date us to change that. They could hug a man. They could, they could be brave and say, you know, man, I really need a hug. Do you know how, do you see how that works? But instead, they'll just go on the internet and be like, women won't date me, so I'm touch starved. I do not feel sorry for men who are touch starved, but will not hug other men. That is a you problem. I know your society has conditioned you to think that you can't, but you can actually not play by those rules. Be brave. The guest said men can't solve loneliness, touch, star touch starvation, or isolation on their own. As a collective, they sure can, and they better. We are not solving this for y'all. We die trying to solve your loneliness. And even when we marry you or date you and you still are like this, we feel even lonelier being next to you because you won't even talk to us. <laughs> I literally did a video about that with the chicken yesterday. Like men will just want a pet. They don't even treat, they won't even talk to us. They just want us to watch them watch TV. No, thank you. That is not fulfilling for me to watch you do stuff. Watch you play video games, watch you watch TV, watch you live this boring, isolated life, but you don't feel alone because you got me sitting next to you. No, thanks. Get a dog. Actually, don't get a dog. You probably won't treat, you probably don't take care of that dog either. You don't take care of your toes. Unless everyone who's listening, uh, who's listening to this goes out and hugs a man, no one will. Can you imagine someone going on there and being like, you know what? 
the way we solve this lonely male loneliness crisis, which is the most important crisis in the world, okay? Uh, the only way we'll solve it is women go hug men. The second I heard this, I kid you not, I decided to hug as many people as possible at the weekly event I host. First of all, not everybody likes hugs. I used to hate hugs. I used to only hug people back because I didn't have boundaries and I didn't know how to say no. And it was my friend Liz. Y'all hear me talk about her all the time, like my, my soulmate. She, was, she would never hug me. She would hug everyone else and then she'd hug me and I was finally like, why don't you hug me? I'm like your best friend. She was like, cause you don't like hugs. And I was like, how'd you know that? She was like, I can tell. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're right, I hate them. <laughs> Um, don't do this. Don't go out and hug everybody because men are touch starved. Don't go hug men. Even the nicest man, don't go hug him. Maybe he doesn't want to hug. Like, what is this? This is the craziest solution to a, 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 a self-imposed crisis, by the way. But uh, what is this? Uh, okay, here we go. Especially men, I feel subtle resistance towards when I meet them for the first time. You know, that flickering moment when your gut whispers, I don't want to hug this person. <laughs> and you shake their and you shake their hand instead yeah there's a reason for that you know what it's it's called men are crazy and um they will follow you home they will literally leave their wives thinking that you a co-worker wants to date them they will they do the craziest things um even if you smile at them they get mad if you don't smile at them and if you do smile at them, they think you like them so there's no what this is a good rule to live by. Don't hug men. I'm not saying ever and not all mean, but why, if your gut says, whispers, I don't wanna hug this person. Don't hug this person. What is this? This is crazy. And a woman said this. <sighs> or avoid contact entirely. Honey, this, this, whatever, this whisper is probably what kept you alive so far. Uh -huh. It's not the, oh no, you better start hugging people your gut tells you not to because men are in a loneliness crisis. The same way Scott Galloway wants us to go date these men because that, it, Scott Galloway and Jordan Peterson both think that women should go marry men because men are violent. So us marrying them is supposed to make them not violent? No, they're literally going to be violent towards us. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, we are not your sacrificial lambs. So this is, um, this, th th like, oh God, oh, we stop listening to men. She literally came to this conclusion because she listened to two men talk about the lady, man, and then this Christ, whatever. I push past that moment of resistance. Don't push past this moment of resistance and try to greet them like a good friend, but they're not your friend. What is, this is the worst of, I can't believe I like skimmed over this. I can't believe she put this online. Because if I had such an open heart and spirit and I'm, and even I don't want to hug this person, who will? <laughs> no one. That's the point. The reason why people's gut is telling them not to hug this person is because they're giving weird vibes probably. It's not because they are a man. And even if it is because they're a man. Women have so much trauma from men and um, other men have so much trauma from men. Do you have any, any, I mean, come on. Feminists care about this. Men don't seem to care about this, most of them, only to derail conversations. But we know that men get groomed by, by older men. Men are, get, are victims of, of SA, boys, boys especially. So if someone is like reluctant to hug a man, they have every right to. Because I don't really know, and I don't think I know any woman who hasn't been essayed, if not like violently or not so violently graped or coerced at the very least, but we all have trauma for men. So your solution is if I don't hug them, who will? Nobody. <laughs> Unless they have earned a hug, don't hug them. God, what is this? This is like, this is, this is like, this is like, um, continuation of like a lot of Gen Xers will know what I'm talking about. I know, like, I know that we've pushed back against this, but for the longest time I grew up with it, you just give all of your family members a hug, even the creepiest ones, even the ones that you're like, Ooh, this man is like, I can tell he's like undressing me with his eyes, this family member, but I got to give him a hug because he's my family. We, we already know now that we don't do this anymore. We, we, we teach children to do 
to do physical affection because they want to, not because they have to, like especially girls. So this is this, you know, if no one else will hug them, then you should, you should, you should, you should. Shut that you should voice out uh, up. <laughs> not many good things happen from you should do this or that because that's just patriarchy working real hard. I'll never know if I'm making a difference with this small second long, seconds long suggestion, but I can rest easier knowing that <laughs> The men in my space don't go months without a hug, which seriously made me tear up when I first heard it. Okay, let me tell you something. Going out and hugging every man you know, every man you see, because he deserves a hug, is not going to keep them from graping us. <laughs> if anything, it's going to make them worse. Cutting, the, cutting off the source. Cutting the vampires off from their source of blood. Cutting them off. This is not ours to give anymore. If they want affection that is healthy, that is consensual, that is trusting, maybe they should start with their friends. We're not giving it to them, especially men that we don't even know, especially men that we're not friends with or close to. Do not hug these men. We talk a lot about, the, I, I just, seeing patriarchy indoctrination in real time, trying to be empathetic towards men, but literally centering men. This is why we gotta do center men. It's fascinating. I, I, I used to think this way too. That's what I'm talking about. For the longest time, I was like, gosh, this really is a hard world for men. And I'm not saying it's not. Patriarchy dehumanizes them. Absolutely. Patriarchy is destroying men too. Clearly. But you, I will never center them as the, the biggest victims of patriarchy. The same way we should never center white people as the biggest uh, victims of white supremacy culture. It makes us dead inside. It makes us um, go against our moral compass. It makes us do things that hate ourselves. It cuts us off from real connection from other human beings, from community, from so many amazing things. It really doesn't benefit us other than power and money. But we are not, we are not the victims. The big, the biggest victims, the main victim. We are never. So I'm sorry, but men, I mean, women die at the hands of men and live in constant fear of men and are controlled by men and don't, can't even, you know, like don't even have rights to their own body because of men. I'm sorry, they're lonely. That sucks. Maybe let go of patriarchy and all the power and entitlement that comes with it. Maybe your life would be better, but men won't do that. The men who won't do that, stop hugging them. Don't hug them. Don't do anything for them. This is their problem to solve. And if they won't work on themselves, Sorry, they can die alone. I don't care. I'd rather them die alone than bring a woman with them. Talk about the moon. So what if we all decide to play a role in making small, second-long gestures towards a kinder or more connected world? I don't want to connect with these psychopaths. It really can be as simple as <laughs> hugging people more freely. Heart. It isn't that simple. Oh my God. Do you not, are you or not, do you, have you never dated what bubble do you live in? Oh God, no, but I get where, I know, I know this voice. I know this voice. This is the pick me voice that is in every single woman because we have to, we've been indoctrinated. We have, we, this voice is in here to keep us alive, but uh, we need to fight back against this voice. So then she mentioned where she heard this, of course. Of course, it's a man talking about this. There is a crisis going on right now. And you know who started this conversation? I know that there has been great guests on his show and stuff like that but you know that dude was exposed as a phony right the diary of a ceo thingy that dude allegedly didn't even go he was in like a, a big um a rich apartment in london when he was a uh, like opposed supposedly whatever i don't know i don't care i tried to do a deep dive on him and i just got lost in it but um I'm sorry, you will never have me listening to two men talking about the lonely male crisis who are not talking about patriarchal conditioning and misogyny and homophobia and how all these are connected. <laughs> this person got dragged rightfully so. I don't mean to be rude, but this sounds exactly like something they can solve themselves by hugging each other and making friends with each other and stuff. Exactly. That's the whole point, y'all. This is not our problem to solve. I know they want us to think it's our problem to solve. Just go date these men. Go hug them. Go help them. I am not in a Beauty and the Beast movie. Let him break tables and control inanimate objects and have his little 
teapots and stuff terrified him on his own. I'm not living in that castle with him. He'll have to make himself a better man. We are not doing it. Hugging them is not going to change them. Anyway, thanks for listening. Follow my Patreon for way more content, personal content, lives, and all that stuff. And let me know if you heard the comment song. By the way, follow my Patreon if you want to see lives with amazing guests, if you want to see my personal stories, travel stuff, all that stuff. Um, link in the caption. Do, do, the comment song. Do, do, the comment song. Mo's edition of the comment song. Do, do, the comment song. Leave a message, sorry, a joke, whatever you want to say. Here it comes. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Let me know if you saw that. That comment song. Just wanted to surprise y'all. Let me know if you saw the toes. Do, do, the comment song. Do, do, the comment song. Say something in the comments so I can know you heard the comment song. Hey, et voila.